Hola amigos, bienvenidos a una edición más de Mariachi Clothing Company. Welcome to another edition of Mariachi Clothing Company. It's been a while since we have published videos. Today we're going to learn about botonaduras. Hoy vamos a hablar y aprender acerca de las botonaduras. We're going to learn about the three main types of botonadura making styles. And we're also going to talk about different materials that are used, etc. And what to look for in a botonadura. If you like the work that we do, click the subscribe button, click the like button, click the notification bell. Uh, that way it really helps us out with a YouTube algorithm so more people can see our videos. Now that that is out of the way, let's get started. The first thing that we are going to talk about today is going to be the botonadura troquelada. That is the die cut uh, botonadura, which is the most common one. I have a, a, a whole cloth right here with different styles of botonadura troquelada, which again, it's the way that it's made, it's a, it's a piece of metal that gets pressed and cut. So this botonadura, it's kind of like a stamp, almost like a rubber stamp. You have your piece of, of metal, they press it, cut it down, and once they get the cut out, you get the shape of the botonadura. And then the loop at the end gets, se lo soldan, la parte largo de atrás, the loop in the back gets soldered on, and then the chain gets attached. We have different types of botonaduras, as you can see, we have tecolotes, uh, we have the botines, we have the cruces. So we have a, a lot of different styles of botonadura. And again, the thing to keep in mind is that this type of botonadura, la botonadura troquelada, is the most economical because of the amount of work that it takes. Unfortunately, being an economical product, uh, most people try to cut corners, they try to make it very inexpensive, very light. So they use the thinnest chain, they use the thinnest type of lamina, the, the metal sheet, it's the thinnest that they can find. And that ends up creating botonaduras that are not very durable. If you have a school group, I would either not get this type of botonadura or make sure that whoever you're buying your trajes from is very, very adamant about the quality of their work. I had a very terrible experience when I started teaching back in 2007. Uh, or 2008, we fundraised for about a year and a half or two to buy trajes for my school. And we ordered, uh, you know, brand new trajes. Everybody was super excited. And unfortunately, uh, when my students were putting on the traje pants, their botonadura started breaking because of the thin chain. It wasn't, they weren't being, uh, you know, descuidados or anything like that. They were actually being very careful, but it was such a flimsy botonadura that uh, they started breaking. So just be careful who you buy your botonadura from, whoever makes your botonaduras or whoever you buy your trajes from, make sure that they make good quality botonadura. In our case, the botonaduras that we make, we have either cadena soldada, which is a reinforced chain, or the eslabón uh, grueso. The different types of botonaduras that people generally use when they have this one. You can have the one piece botonadura, which one of the most common ones is the a big horse head that you just have one horse head going down or two horse heads going in opposite directions. You have the two piece botonaduras and you have the three piece. Generally, the two piece has an adorno in the center, which is una, una gotita, like a little teardrop. They could have a rope. They could have a, una, una nuez, like a little nut. So there's a lot of different adornos that the different botonadura makers use. And you can personalize most of your botonaduras with the rope, with a bellota, uh, with that, which is an acorn. That's what it is, a bellota, an acorn. Or you can choose to have no adorno whatsoever. Or in some botonaduras, you can have three adornos, which in my opinion looks a little bit more elegant. Uh, the broches, in the, same, in the same way, they are made by the same technique. Most of the botonadura makers, what they do is that they get the calendario azteca broche, and then they add a piece of the botonadura design that you chose to the center so it kind of makes its own brooch and it matches the botonadura that you have. So that's that troquelada. So now the next type of botonadura that we're going to talk about is going to be the botonadura vaciada, uh, which uh, that would be the die cast molded botonadura, which you melt the metal, put it in a mold, you take it out, but it does require a lot more metal and it requires a lot more time and work. It is also more expensive because it requires more metal, but the final product looks a lot more beautiful. This is the botonadura 
vaciada. And uh, you guys can see there's a lot more detail to this type of botonadura. You can see on the horns, you have a, a, a 3D design going on. It has a loop, the part that goes in, into your pants. And this botonadura is uh, a lot more elaborate, more artistic. It's a lot more work uh, and it's more expensive. Not prohibitively so. This is a type of botonadura that I always recommend for school groups uh, because one is more elegant and everybody wants to have something that looks a lot nicer and also more durable. So it's less likely to break. This is, you know, solid metal versus uh, a piece of metal sheet. And uh, most people that make botonaduras will use higher quality chain in the botonadura. As you guys can see right here, this chain is a lot thicker than a regular botonadura. Clásico en mariachi son caballos. La charrería is very intertwined with mariachi and our culture and the development of our music. So you are going to find those motifs in the different designs. Otro que está muy padre, que, que me gusta también mucho, es la tecolote. So you'll see right here, I'll put two different ones. So this es el tecolote entero. There's also la cabeza grande de tecolote. So this is a really, really big botonadura. This es una botonadura de rosas. One of my favorite ones is the, and now it's funny because now this is starting to sound like a QVC commercial. And my favorite botonadura is because of blah, 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 blah. Es, es la, de, la de gallos peleando. Uh, unfortunately, I put the loop in backwards. They should be facing inward so it looks like they're fighting. I got this botonadura for my school group uh, with un traje de gamusa color carmesí. So it's a, a crimson colored micro suede traje with these gallos and it looks so, so elegant. So it's one of my favorite styles of botonadura. The downfall to botonaduras vaciadas. They are a lot heavier right now that I grab this one. I can feel the heft. It's a lot heavier. So if you have a traje, for example, if you have a traje de gamusina or de gamusa, that's a very heavy fabric. You add the botonadura, that botonadura is gonna add another five to 10 pounds versus a botonadura like the troquelada, which is super light, but not as durable and not as elegant. This is una botonadura vaciada con un trabajo mucho más fino y mucho más caro, que es el, el toro, ese tipo de toro. Pueden ver que está mucho más detallado. So you can see that it's like a, almost like a 3D printed or, or sculpted, hand sculpted uh, type of work. Y estas se utiliza solamente una pieza going down the leg. So you have a lot of pieces going down the leg instead of having, you know, a massive thing is gonna like wrap around your leg. If you put a chain and put another piece, it's gonna be too big. And before I forget, uh, very, very important, La Botonadura, una de las más tradicionales that Mariachi Vargas made famous, which is un charro con sombrero, became very popular. I believe it was in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. And then it, it kind of like started becoming popular with the different people that make the Botonaduras. Esta es otra también, as, as you guys know, or if you guys don't know, now you're gonna learn. Mexico, it's a mostly Catholic country. Uh, El Día de la Virgen es uno de los días más importantes para los mexicanos. You know, you can't be surprised to find La Virgen de Guadalupe in Botonadura or other things like uh, La Capilla de Guadalajara, también La Catedral de Guadalajara. If you go to a platero, like people that actually do work with silver, they will usually be able to make you custom work. Whereas with Abaciadas, it's not as common to have someone do that type of custom work for you because it's very expensive to create the figure, make the molds. So a lot of people aren't willing to do that type of work, but uh, there are a lot of designs. Now we are gonna talk about the final type of botonadura, which is la botonadura fina, botonadura de joyería. Again, this type of work is done by plateros, people that do uh, work in silver and they will contain even if they're not a hundred percent silver or fully bañadas en plata like dipped in silver they will have a small percentage of silver to give it that different quality finish opposed to you know you can see on the botonadura troquelada that they have a slightly darker tint to them versus the botonaduras de joyería which let me see what would be a good example i think this would be a great example estas son también flores these have a slightly wider tint to them because they do have a small amount of silver to them. It's a lot uh, higher quality. It's a lot uh, more detailed work. The molds take a lot more time to, to make and it has 
hollow spots on it, whereas most botonadura vaciada is just a solid piece. O también le, otro nombre que le dan esta botonadura es, me, me parece que botonadura de centrífuga, because they put in a centrifuge to be able to fill in all the spots, whereas if you just melt the metal, you will have spots that are missing or that don't fill in completely. And if you can see right here, this is una, esta es una cadena soldada. So this is a welded chain. It's a lot lighter and it's a lot more durable than any of the other chains. There's also the cadena doble sortijada, which is made by hand, which is made from wire and it's made into a loop kind of like an, an eight shape that is uh, a lot more expensive because of the type of uh, work that it is. It's made by hand and it takes a lot longer. Otra que le gusta mucho a la gente that looks really elegant. A eso les llaman lamparitas. So when you're on stage, this type of botonadura is going to shimmer a lot. It's going to uh, shine a lot with the uh, stage light. So it's going to look very, very elegant. Hay botonaduras de coronas, botonaduras de rueda de carreta. Again, the, the motifs that call back to the rancho. Esta botonadura de espuelas está hecha de varias partes. So the cool thing about it is that the espuelas, the spurs, actually spin. And one of the most common and emblematic botonaduras from Mariachi, this is super popular in LA, is la de herradura con cabeza de caballo. So I could not do a video without talking about this botonadura. This is the smaller size, but you have them in different sizes. Here for our botonaduras that we use with my group and that we sell at the store, uh, I had a horse head made for the Adorno del Centro. And depending on what leg it goes, the horse head faces in one direction or if it's on the opposite leg, it will face the other direction. But you can see the detail of work is very beautiful and detailed work. When you're talking about botonaduras, ahora sí, hablando de, de niveles de botonaduras, you know, you have troqueladas, you have vaciadas, you have botonadura fina, then you have the botonadura de plata, which will be the same acabado as the botonadura fina, but it uses a higher percentage of silver. And those tend to run in the thousands of dollars now uh, when you're talking about those botonaduras de plata. Uh, también hay botonaduras que tienen plata y tienen oro. So there's a lot, you know, once you start talking about those types of botonaduras, the sky's the limit when it comes to price and when it comes to uh, your design and creativity. Your joyero or your platero is going to be able to make you whatever type of botonadura that you want. And again, those are not as common in mariachi because unless you're a show group that invests heavily in their trajes, the botonadura for mariachi for the most part is a tool, it's una herramienta. So you can't have a botonadura de plata that you might lose a piece. And guess what? That just costs you $50 for losing one piece. Because uh, if your botonadura is three, $4,000 because it's solid silver, you lose a piece, that's 50 or $100 right there, lost. So it's impractical, most people don't use it. In la charrería, en el arte de la charrería, in the sport of charrería, they do use botonaduras de plata, broches de plata, things like that, because it, uh, it goes as part of the tradition for that sport. And if you haven't looked it up, if you don't know much about charrería, I highly recommend look up videos on charrería because you are going to be amazed at the tradition and the beauty of that sport that's 100% Mexican. Veamos algo que se me olvide. Oh, este es un broche de letras, troquelado. But it also has hand etching. So you can start having custom work, etching work in your botonaduras. Even with the economical troquelado type of work, you can also customize and start making it more elegant. So just because you order for your group or because you don't have a lot of money to spend, that does not mean that you can have something beautiful and elegant that will reflect your personality. And botonaduras are very unique to each group and to the musicians that wear them. So it's very important that you guys choose something that is going to reflect your personality and what you guys like. I hope that you guys learned something today. We want to help everybody learn more about mariachi, mariachi tradition, mariachi culture, and how to become better at what we do. On our next video about botonaduras, we are actually going to start talking about how to take care of your botonadura, how to put on botonaduras in your traje, and how to clean your botonadura, because, oh man, I've seen some charros with botonaduras that are nightmarishly bad. They're rusted, they're black, all uh, you know, tarnished. So we gotta take care of our stuff, guys. We gotta make sure that we 
take very good care of how we portray ourselves with our traje de charro or traje de mariachi. So without further ado, don't forget to click like, subscribe, the notification bell. Y muchísimas gracias por ver nuestros videos, compañeros y amigos. Nos vemos muy pronto. Have a good one.